Hey seventh graders, welcome back. Today's lesson is 1.3 and 1.4 evolutionary history. Uh, yesterday we really kind of talked about, or excuse me, in our last lesson, 1.2, we really talked about how organisms might be able to be possibly related to, to each other based on similar structures that we see. So we really started touching on that and looking at some similarities that our mystery fossil might have with other organisms and how we can compare some species with our little card sort with others. Today we're going to kind of just move further with that and your learning targets are I can identify shared or homologous structures between organisms and I can use shared or homologous structures to identify common ancestors and descendant species. So some big vocab today in this lesson. So in your notebook you guys need to add shared structures. Uh, shared structure is a body structure in two or more species that features the same part, uh, excuse me, same parts, for example, the same bones. So we also refer to, in fact, most scientists don't actually use the term shared structure, they use homologous structure. So if you guys remember from previous lessons, like when we did genetics and talk about homozygous recessive or homozygous dominant, we learned a lot about how homo means the same. Okay, so when we're talking about these structures and organisms that are the same, those are shared structures or what scientists refer to as homologous structures. So I'm going to kind of use both of those terms whenever I talk about a shared structure or a homologous structure. Okay, evolution is the process in which species adapt to environmental changes over a very long time. And that's really the key to this is that this happens over a extremely long time, millions and millions of years. Okay, and then finally, a descendant species is a more recent species, so one that we might even see living today, that evolved from an ancestor population. So, I mean, if we can look at the way organisms live, like maybe they live on land, maybe they live on air, uh, in the air, okay, or, you know, looking at how they might reproduce or birth young. So if we look at mammals give live birth versus like reptiles lay eggs and birds lay eggs, we could look at those as similarities as well, although those, although those aren't a specific structure that we'd find in an organism. So that's important too, to be able to see kind of how um, species are related to each other based on other characteristics outside of fossil record. Okay, and then you guys had two key concepts to add. Species inherit their body structures from their ancestor populations. And two, body structures that are shared between two species are evidence that these two species inherited the shared structures from a common ancestor population. So it doesn't mean that one evolved into another, but maybe they um, have similarities between an older species that lived even further um, in the past. So we're going to start kind of taking a look at that concept here. Okay, so you guys should have added those to your one note. Okay, moving on to your warm-up today, you guys have species A and you have species B. Shared or homologous structures are body structures that feature the same parts, for example, bones, in the same pattern and relative position. So just because we have a bone, like maybe you'll see a hip bone. Um, in lesson 1.2, you guys saw, I think the fish had the hip bone, but it wasn't attached to the backbone like we saw uh, in the camel-like relative Okay, um, so we wouldn't necessarily call that a shared or homologous structure. Just because it's there, it might exist in a way different pattern or a relative position um, in one or more organisms. So when we talk shared structures, we want to see them um, have more similarities other than just their presence. Okay, so we have species A and species B. You guys can kind of take a look at what might be some shared structures there. Um, even though there's some shared structures, there's also differences. Like if we look at the skulls. Okay, the skulls, they both have them, but the location of their nostril holes is a little different. Okay, so that's something to think about as well. Okay, so above are the bones of two imaginary species. Look at the bone structures for both species. Then select which body structures these two species share. Okay, so take a close look at them. Remember those guidelines that we went over in 1.2, counting, counting them, really looking back and forth and looking carefully um, and being able to compare other things as well. Okay, like their position, um, their orientation, those kinds of things. Okay, so look, they have skulls. So you guys will go through, use your draw tool and you'll circle or highlight um, any of these that you guys think species A and species B share. For instance, if we look right here, we have pretty similar to the same backbone, same number of bones, same structure. So I would go highlight backbone on that one. So that's one example done for you, but there are definitely other things. So go ahead and circle which ones are shared or homologous structures. 
Okay, when you guys are done with that, we'll go ahead and move on to the next slide or the next activity. Okay, this is also part of your warm up. Do you think the two species from the warm up have any ancestors in common? So you guys will circle yes or no in class. We'll discuss what you guys chose on that answer, and then we will revisit this question towards the end of this lesson. So circle yes or no. Do you think they could have any ancestors in common? Okay. All right, moving on. You guys are going to figure out how to work the sim. So you guys will right-click the sim link, and you guys will open up the sim. Sim looks like this. You guys are going to be doing free explore for this first little part. So I want you guys to take about three or four minutes to just kind of figure out how to explore the sim. And then I'm going to go through a few things for you guys. So go ahead, pause this video, um, explore the sim, and then come on back and I'll show you guys some things I want you guys to know how to work in the sim. All right, so obviously you guys are going to be in the free explore. You guys see each of these orange markers are different places that we can explore in the sim. So I'm going to try to get some more close to Montana for funsies. So if I click on that, okay, the map view just kind of shows you uh, dig sites where fossils and museums have been found. And this indicates where in the world uh, you guys will see these same fossils. So this is actual like, you know, you might find this actual fossil living in this area um, based on what we know historically of what we found. Okay, uh, so if I go ahead and press on a dig site, I can see the fossil that was found in this location. So on this case, I'm looking close to Montana. I think Montana is really more like here. So this might be more like the Dakotas or even Minnesota. This is a deodon. Okay, and from here I can save it and I can study it so I can add it to a collection. And then I can also click on it to learn more about the day of dawn. So it was a group of large mammals that looked like pigs, except that these creatures grew to be 1.8 meters tall. So if you guys think of how big a pig is, um, and then you think about a meter stick, this is almost two meter sticks tall. So you guys would have to stack two meter sticks end to end and about three times taller than any uh, pigs are alive today. So that's about three times taller. Daydon had huge bone crushing jaws, but they may have looked like much fiercer predators than they actually were. Fossil evidence suggests that they were omnivores, which meant that they ate plants as well as animals and that they often scavenged prey killed by other animals. Daydon lived in North America about 25 million years ago. So you guys also kind of figure out how to Put a time frame on these fossils as well okay um and then you guys again saw how to save that fossil okay to view a fossil uh we're going to use the tick to lick fossil as an example so at the very top of the map let me close out of this here i'm going to go ahead and click on this little guy here this is the tick to lick okay and I'm gonna press study to open up its little study window. Okay, and then I'm gonna point out the three tabs. So up here I got exhibit, I've got appearance, and I've got some structures. So you guys will be able to see some of those little structures um, that we've seen so far, like the nostril, where the nostril is located. It looks like it's kind of at the end of its snout and the end of its skull. The pelvic bone, this is kind of like the fish that we looked at in the last one, where we had a pelvic bone, but it wasn't attached to the backbone, uh, like that camel relative was. Uh, and then we've got the radius, the ulna, and the distal bones all right here in the hands. Okay, so in these I've got structures. Again, you guys will be able to read a little bit more about that. Um, and then you guys will also see that same little soccer ball used to kind of describe how big this was. So really when we look at this, this is maybe like one soccer ball tall. And then maybe like one, two, three, four, five, six. I can't see the rest of its tails, but maybe six to eight soccer balls long. Okay, um, so you guys can see exactly how big um, that organism is. Okay, and then also I can go into the tree view, which shows us kind of an evolutionary history or an evolutionary tree. So we can see here's some eubacteria, which are some larger bacteria. We've got protists, which we've talked about, like the amoebas. You guys have seen the amoebas eat the little organisms in that one video I showed you. Um, different protists. Um, fungi, you guys can just go through and then we can expand and go even further as well. Okay, so this is basically all life on Earth, but obviously this is a sim that's an amplify, so it doesn't encompass absolutely every living organism, um, but we can definitely see a little breakdown. Um, all life, we can look at just animals as well. So once we kind of focus in on these different kingdoms, this is basically kingdom animalia, okay? 
Um, and you guys can see the different breakdown if you guys remember our kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Okay, we can kind of see that breakdown as well here. So if the kingdom's animalia and phylum, if you guys remember revertebrata, okay. Um, so you guys can kind of see that same kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and then all different organisms or species under the genus. So that's kind of cool and seeing how that relates to what we've learned so far. Okay, and then if we go ahead again and click on animals, we can see that different evolutionary tree or the branch of that evolutionary tree. And then we can even go further and say, all right, let's look at the, none of these organisms here have vertebrae, like an earthworm doesn't have a backbone. So let's just look at the organisms that have backbones. So we can look at, all right, this hagfish was the first um, bony fish that we came up with. It looks like a, it's disgusting. It looks like a big, gross um, worm, <laughs> if you will. Okay. So anyway, that's some things I wanted to point out in the sim for you guys that you're going to be doing. The next part of this activity is going to be a little scavenger hunt for you guys. So you have seven little questions to kind of research here. So if we go in the map view, what happens when you press on one of the orange markers? So you guys can go back to the map view. You guys can press on one of the um, orange markers, and then you guys will tell me what happens. It's just multiple choice. So you guys will just use the draw tool to circle what happened there. Okay. In the map view, how can you add a fossil to the fossil collection? Add one or more, uh, excuse me, one or two fossils to your collection, then go to tree view. What happens when you select rows in the tree navigation window on the bottom left? So if we go into the bottom left in our tree view, okay, what happens when we select these? Okay, basically you guys are going to zoom in on life there. Okay, uh, take, in this one, I didn't mean to check on that one. I just kind of get it to go away. Take one fossil from the fossil collection and drag it onto the tree to figure out where it belongs. Where did your fossil belong? So we saved this one earlier. So if we click on it, I'm going to probably want to start back at all life. Okay, and if I click here and drag it over, um, you guys can kind of see where it might belong. Okay. So obviously this is probably something with a vertebrae, so we're gonna go here and do that instead. And say, all right, could it be here? Nope. Here? Nope. Here? Or you can say, show me, and then it'll show you exactly where it belongs to. Okay, so you guys can really zoom in on those. All right, so at any rate, um, select a few of the orange little white eye icons. So I'm gonna show you guys one of those. Um, this is little orange, white, and I, excuse me, I icon. So click on that, tell me what it does. And then what happens when you press study next to a species on the right side of the tree view? So if you guys go over here and you hit study, okay, um, what happens? Okay, so anyway, go through and then you have one more question to answer. Press study for any species on the tree and read about it. What species did you read about and what did you learn? So you don't have to just pick a fossil that you guys um, chose, you guys can choose like a camel. Okay, and then what species did you read about and what did you learn? So tell me a little bit about what you learned. I chose camel in that case, but you guys can choose something different. Okay, once you guys are done with that, you guys can go ahead and restart this video and we'll move on to the next activity. So activity four is read and it is how are you, how are you like a blue whale? Okay, so we'll go ahead and take a look. This is what your article looks like. So you guys will read through that. And then as you guys read through that, I want you guys to consider this one image that you guys got out of this article. So this is a little evolutionary tree and it kind of teaches you guys how to read one. Okay, so we have a common ancestor population. This population had a backbone, a radius and an ulna, which we found on the front limb, lungs, and then also structures for producing milk. And then branching off of that common ancestor, we have our two descendant species. We have a blue whale and we have a human. So this is how they're similar. They have a backbone. They have a radius and an ulna, which are our front limb bones. They have lungs, just like this common ancestor, and also structures for producing milk, because both are mammals. But this is where we have a little bit of a difference. We got tail flukes for swimming or the ability to walk upright. So now based on that image from the article, what are the descendants in this diagram? And what body structures did the common ancestor have? Okay, so answer those two questions. And then these two. What are the body structures that both descendants share with this common ancestor? Again, we kind of already went over that. And why do paleontologists make diagrams like this? What are they trying to show? So tell me what you think paleontologists are trying to show by building a diagram like this. Okay, 
This is how complicated it could get. This is the great tree of life, and this shows basically all of the living organisms that we know um, the best we could in one image. <coughs> Bless me. All right, so you guys can see. Um, again, it's really hard to, and you guys can zoom in on it, but we can see, all right, here's Earth, here's Bill, and then the outside of this is all organisms that we see living today versus, like, the beginning of time. Okay, so you guys can take a look at that and see how complicated it can be. Obviously, the sim makes ours a little bit easy and doesn't encompass absolutely every living organism. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we're going to go back into the sim for this next part. I'm going to go ahead and actually just open a new sim link here. If I can get it to work. All right. So as that opens up, what we're going to take a look at is tracing a shared body structure. So how do we use that evolutionary tree to find shared or homologous body structures? Okay, so for this one it says, explore the tree view of the sim to answer the investigative question. Why do different species share similar structures? Find two different species with a shared body structure. So that's your goal, okay? What body structure with you will you explore? Um, you guys can choose any one of these in class. Each of these students got assigned either a vertebral col a column, which is backbone, jaws, a humerus, a radius, and an ulna, which are your arm bones, um, a neck, or limbs with digits, um, like toes, for example, or fingers are also digits. So you guys can choose any one of those, circle whichever one you guys chose, and then you guys will go ahead and explore that in the sim. So open the sim in the free explore and, sp and press the tree to open tree view. So we're going to go here, and then we're going to go up to our tree view, okay? Navigate through the evolutionary tree and press the eye icons on the branches as you go. Read the text from each icon until you find the eye icon that has the body structure you are exploring. So I'm going to go through this. It says uh, cells with DNA in a nucleus. So obviously, if we're looking for backbone, we're going to need to go in a lot further. Okay, muscles, same on the left and right. Tissues and nerve cells, nope, still not there. Um, this one is vertebral column. So basically any organism to the right of this will have a vertebral, vertebral col column. Anything to the left that we just kind of navigated away from does not have a vertebrae or a backbone. Okay, so um, again, anything to the right of that is going to be if I'm choosing backbone, okay, I can choose any of those two organisms, okay? So navigate through the evolutionary tree and press each of the eye icons on the tree branches as you go. Read the text from each icon until you find the eye icon that has the body structure you are exploring. Follow the tree branches to the right of this icon to find two living species that have this body structure. Try to find species that are very different from each other by expanding branches of the evolutionary tree at the bottom of the screen. So if I'm looking at this, anything to the right of this is going to have a backbone. So maybe I choose a Pacific hagfish, but then I also want to choose, mammals would be to the right of the backbone, uh, uh, bone ma ka. why did I choose weird words? An elephant. Okay, so I could compare this hagfish to an elephant. Those are very different species, but both share a backbone, meaning that at some point, both of them have a common ancestor, okay? Uh, the eye icons are the orange and white circles with the letter I in the center, which you guys already know, and then navigate through the evolutionary tree by pressing on the arrows in the tree navigation window or by pressing the arrows in the main window, okay? So name the two species you found that share the body structure you explored. You guys will name your two species that you looked for, and then you guys will use these words to fill in the blanks here. Species inherit blank, so grab one of those and drag it to this blank, from blank, again, find your correct vocab word and drag it to this blank. And then if two living species have some of the same what, okay, this means that they are probably blank of blank that also had those blank. So you guys will notice that one of these you're going to have to copy and paste and use twice, okay? So figure out which one it is, and then you guys can just right-click it, copy it, and then paste and make another one, and you guys can fill in that fifth blank. Okay, or excuse me, there's two that you're going to have to, no, just one. Two, you're going to have to do that too. So two of these you're going to have to copy and paste to make another word. Okay, so once you guys are done with that, you're going to re-answer this poll question. Do you think the two species from the warm-up have any answers that ancestors in common? So if we look back, these were our two species from the warm-up. So do you think they have any ancestors in common? Okay, think about this question. Do they have any shared or homologous structures? Okay. 
and then answer that again. And then what you're gonna look for next on this is above are the images of the bone structures from two imaginary species that you compared during the warm up. Look at the shared or homologous structures of these two species. Which of our four fossils below look the most like a common ancestor? Meaning that these two would be descendant species related to um, an older organism below. So which one of these fossils would represent their common ancestor that they both descended from? Okay, so think about what these two species have in common. And obviously you're gonna look for that in the, these organisms as well. So you guys could have more than one option here. So you guys can say fossil one looks like the most, uh, fossil two, fossil three, or fossil four. If you guys have two that you think could both be common ancestors, circle both of them, okay? And then finally answer this question. Explain your answer choices, okay, or choice. Describe the shared structures between the two living species and the fossil species that you chose. Be sure to say which fossil species you are describing. Okay, once you guys are done with that, go ahead, finish your wrap up, circle yes or no if you have any questions. If you have questions, type them here. And then 4321, how do you think you did on this assignment? You are all done. Go ahead and hand it in, and I hope you guys are having a great day. Bye.